I'm Ken Brunson. I'm the director for the Red Hills Initiative as part of the Kansas Nature Conservancy. The reason the Nature Conservancy in Kansas has a presence in the Red Hills and why it started the Red Hills Initiative is because the Red Hills uh, harbors uh, the, one of the most biodiverse complements of, of animals and plants in the state. Uh, the Red Hills Initiative was, was started almost three years ago and with the intent to, to try to to apply some conservation programs in the Red Hills. The reason we uh, like to, to go out and herp uh, is we get a chance to look under rocks and find all these treasures and of course it's a, it's a great family activity. We look for critters under rocks because we find critters under rocks. Uh, it's a cool place to, to find uh, all sorts of things from, from beetles and worms and snakes and scorpions. The scorpions we have in the Red Hills uh, it is primarily the, the striped scorpion. It's probably the most common one in the state of Kansas. And uh, it's, it's got venom and it's got a stinger on its tail. It's not something you want to get stung by, but uh, it won't kill you. Some of the, the more common snakes that we find in the Red Hills and throughout uh, a lot of Kansas include, of course, the bull snake, uh, the black rat snake, the milk snake, and also this, the smaller species that we had today that was the ground snake. The really special creature that we found was the prairie rattler, and we don't always run across these. Uh, we don't have a lot of dangerous animals out in Kansas. Uh, rattlesnakes are one of the, the, the dangers uh, that we have out in the wilds, and uh, they do their share of uh, rodent eating, so they're important from that standpoint. People are afraid of bats for a whole number of reasons. Generally, they're, they're taught to be afraid because of misinformation about rabies incidents in bats, for instance. Uh, bats have a very low incidence of rabies in wild populations. It's a lower incidence than what you have in raccoons, uh, skunks, and even domestic dogs. Uh, but there's always a, this uh, misinformation that's out there, and people like to, to sensationalize that. Uh, also, uh, Bats, uh, they do not uh, attack people, they, uh, uh, they do not get in your hair. They, we don't have vampire bats in Kansas. Of our 16 species of bats we have in Kansas, we have over half of those species that occur in the Red Hills, and they're almost all insect eaters. Now, the importance of bats is that they are, uh, they are a critical element of the food chain. Uh, they eat insects uh, by the bushel. Uh, each uh, individual bat can consume uh, a, a pretty good percentage of its body weight in insects every evening when they go out to forage. They are nocturnal, so they're big insect eaters, and from that standpoint, uh, they have a, a huge benefit for, for humans. It's certainly uh, well known that a, a lot of folks uh, are not real keen on some of these creepy crawlies and it's certainly easy to, to see the joy in a kid's eyes when they come out and they get to experience some of these creatures and you realize that a lot of that fear is just learned behavior. Why do I have an interest in all these things? Uh, it developed at a very young age. I, I guess you could say it was a natural interest in nature. Uh, I, had, I was carrying around toads in my pocket uh, before I was six. Uh, had a, constant interest in anything that was creepy and crawly and was, was out to get it. So I've been able to live my life's dream in, in uh, dealing with nature and to, to be able to, to mess around with all these cool critters.